Hey, look, face it. None of us are perfect. There's only been one perfect man that walked this earth, and that's Jesus Christ. But we as Christians, we eventually stumble, we eventually sin. But what happens when a Christian sins? We're going to talk about that and much more on this episode of Couples in Pursuit Live Bible Study Edition. Couples Pursuit. Hello, this is Vincent. And Valerie. Woodard. Woodard. And on this episode of Couples Pursuit Live Bible Study... We're going to talk about what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when Christians sin? What do you mean? Christians sin. Mm-hmm. Well, Surely. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of train of thoughts. You know, people say, well, once you get saved, you shouldn't sin no more. And you shouldn't desire to sin. But right. we're not perfect. And so we're at a place right now where what happens when we make an error? Because that's what a, a sin it's, it's an error, yeah. Yeah, error. So error, it's, yeah. It's well, part, one part of us is perfect. Mm-hmm. When when we reach salvation, and we right. talked about that, and that's we become um, one in spirit mm-hmm. with Christ, right? We become a new creature, a new creation. But the other two parts of us have to to catch up. That's right. And we spend our lifetime. Um, working out our soul salvation if you would that means getting our body and our soul our mind will emotion and conscience to line up with our spirit that's right that is that is whole and perfect and so yes we make mistakes there are things that we have to discover along the way that need to be changed about us and and we don't always get it right that's right that's yeah. right if you remember from a previous video we actually broke down this perfect inner change this new nature this new creation that we became when we accepted jesus christ as our lord and savior we accepted salvation mm-hmm. um we went over to second um uh, Thessalo- thessalonians no corinthians second corinthians 5 and 17. 17 and um if you don't have it um it simply says therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creature or new creation the old has passed away and see um, the new has come. That's the CSB version. Now, some versions say all things become new. And what we're talking about, what my wife discussed, we're talking about your um, spirit, your spirit person, and how your spirit person became one with the Holy Spirit. And now that's sealed from the inside. We're perfect. And God, it was a gift. God said, okay, my son, my daughter, here you go. And from there, we know who we are. The only way we can perceive who we are inside is to look at the word, to read the word, and believe what God says. And now we're at a point right now, but what happens when I still have those urges that I might have had before I said the salvation? Well, <laughs> one or two things happen. Uh, either give in to it, mm. or you don't. Mm. Or you don't give in to it, and you want to, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so the word says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, right? So if you think about doing the thing, you may as well have done it. So you, we are in process where we need to still uh, train or transform our mind, mm-hmm. uh, renew our mind. And that takes us to Romans 8, mm-hmm. right? Or Romans 12 and 1. He says, I, be, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your, your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. And it goes on to say that we're supposed to come out from among them. What's them? That's the world. Mm-hmm. And be separate and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm-hmm. So the word, like you said before, is what renews our mind. It becomes a mirror to show us our flaws so that we can change them. And no, it doesn't happen overnight. But what should happen is when we come to oneness in spirit with the Lord and we begin to learn of him, what offends him should offend us. Mm -hmm. And so there should be no desire to sin. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. But then I believe it's Paul that said, what I would do, I do not do. And Mm -hmm. that that I would not do, I do. And what does that mean? I'm trying to get this thing together. Yeah. What Mm -hmm. I don't want to do, sometimes I do it and vice versa. And so... God gives us grace and mercy mm-hmm. to continue to get it right. But mm-hmm. when there's a difference, iniquity is one of those words. It's like, you know, you talk about sins, 
trespasses, iniquities. Sinning is like you said to err mm-hmm. or to 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 have error, mm-hmm. right? But iniquity is a, is a way of living life. It's deliberate. Deliberate. Sin. Intentional. Intention. We think about it or meditate on uh, it. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm planning on it. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like you getting ready to go to the club tonight. <laughs> you know? And what's going to And what I'm going to do when I get there. And, mm-hmm. you know, and you've been planning on it all weekend. You know you're going to do it again next weekend. Mm-hmm. But you're confessing. Well, I'm saved Mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, and what, what club are we talking about? The golf club? No. No. The country club? No. (laughs) Has it been that long? (laughs) Has it been that long? (laughs) (laughs) And what kinds of things are happening at this place that we're going to? Are we going there to witness to people? (laughs) Probably not. You know, could you go and not drink and not partake? You could, mm. but what are you going? What, what's the, what's the intent? Are you going really? to sin? When I'm talking about iniquity, you're going to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. You're going to jump in with enjoy. both feet mm-hmm. and just like revel in it. Yeah, you know. And that's the difference. When we become Christians, we no longer desire to sin, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and therefore we get the the phrase that we use being godly sorrowful. When we do something that we know has it, has um i would say offended god but with, but yes yeah, sin is offensive to god mm-hmm. when we do something that has offended him it should make us sorrowful godly sorrowful you know in the in the fact that we've accepted salvation we know how much he did for us and i don't want to li- i don't want to continue in this state mm-hmm. there's a difference between that and iniquity and christians do do not or should not practice sin. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And you know, because what well, we we have to recognize that um, we know what positions that we can put ourselves in that can lead to uh, mm-hmm. iniquity, like we talked about, lead to deliberate, actionable sin to actually that you are actually proud of. And that right there is um, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's a dangerous place that's to a be. Dangerous place to be. Yeah. What happens when you when you make a mistake? You get an argument with your wife. You yelled. You might have, you know, said some things you know you shouldn't have said. What mm-hmm. happens when even with a coworker, maybe your children? You know what happens when you, when you drive down the street and. Um, uh, somebody cut you off in the lane and, and, and you, you cut them out. <laughs> so there, you were speaking in other times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are times when we can we can't do that and don't let's not fool ourselves. It can happen in a, in, in the moment. It's a verse in the, uh, 1 John 1 8 and 9 that says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the yeah. truth is not in us. If we confess our sins I love mm-hmm. this part he is faithful and just. We're talking about God to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. I mean, so we're talking about even after salvation. He's talking to us, <laughs> to the believers. What happens? Because what do you expect? At, uh, what do you call a person who's not saved? A sinner. Mm-hmm. So by definition, this is how we do. Yeah. You know, before how we behave before salvation. So it's not the sinner Mm-mm. is the Christian mm-hmm. who finds themselves in sin. Mm-hmm. What happens after that? Do you have to go back to the altar and get saved all over again? No, no. Jesus came and died one <laughs> one time. Oh, okay. For us. And for our sins. Okay. <laughs> for all eternity. He doesn't have to keep coming down like in the old Bible days when they sacrifice a, a goat or ox and or um, whatever they sacrificed, you have to, you did that, and I actually um, was good for a day. It was it was it was good for that time, and then if you did anything else up the next day, you had to make a, another sacrifice. Or whenever you went back to that place, if you wanted to compound all the ones that you did, and hope you didn't die, you had to make sacrifices for each one that you wanted to, you know forgiveness for. But no. Jesus became the perfect uh, sacrifice and he died and he from that God forgave all our sins meaning by the word we mean sin the deep on a deep level is the separation from God it's, it's when the wages of sin 
is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So when back in, when Adam and Eve, when they fell, mm -hmm. their wage, the price they had to pay was separation from God. He had to actually tell them, excuse me, you know, um, I want you to step outside. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> You know, now, I was wondering where you were going to excuse me. <laughs> but it was all. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> it was separation from God. And right. Even though they lived a long time, some um, theologians might have thought this might have happened in their first hundred years of life. And then they lived from probably another 800 years. And after that, mm -hmm. you know, but eventually they did die, but they had to be separated from God. That's That was the real penalty was death, separation from from God. Well, right. I I like to I like to um, elaborate on that point. Mm -hmm. When you know you you mentioned um, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Mm -hmm. Right. So the wages that's what you get paid. Mm -hmm. You know. So whatever kind of work you're doing, right? Spirit. Uh -huh. Whatever kind of spirit work you're doing, you're gonna get paid for that. Uh -huh. So if you're sinning, then you're going to get paid. Mm. for that sin and that that wage is death mm -hmm. you actually earn that right so when people say well God did this and God did that no God didn't mm -hmm. necessarily do God did not do a thing to you to cause harm to come to you what we do is we open ourselves up to harm when we sin we invite it you know which is why we should be quick to to uh Repent, right? Mm -hmm. And so, if the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life, um, but then they lived another eight hundred years. Mm -hmm. The thing we have to understand is, death is sin is separation from God, but death is not always absence of breath. That's right. Yeah. Death is not absence of breath. Mm -hmm. Death can be separation. It can mm -hmm. be spiritual death, financial death. You know emotional it can be many different things that can can die or cease to grow in your life as a result of how we live which is why we should not continue to sin yeah like yeah. when you pluck a banana you pluck a fruit from a tree you know it was connected to the branch and it was getting its vines and nutrients and all those things but then at the moment you took it away from the tree separated from the tree mm -hmm. you know it was it started this process there that you don't necessarily see. And that you don't see. You, you don't, don't see, see immediately. Yeah. But you let it set, stay separated from that source long enough, it's going to deteriorate and go back yeah. to the ground. But the awesome thing about this, about this study right here is that we learn, okay, now we don't have to pay that wage anymore. It's already been, the price has already been paid. It's a lot of verses. In Matthew 121, it says, it talks about the prophecy that the angel came and spoke um, to Joseph, actually, and tell, was telling him about um, that Mary would give birth to a son. It says, she would give birth to a son. I'm talking about Matthew 121, and you are to name him Jesus because he would save his people from their sins. Point blank. Point blank. Now, because of Jesus dying on the cross, the wage has been paid. We no longer have to be separated from God. We're not connected now. The thing that we deal with now, when we do error, when we do um, make a mistake, when we do sin as a Christian, is that we deal with the consequences of it. We deal with how it impacts our, our body and our soul because we instantly know what is good and bad. We never had that taken away from us. From, from Adam and Eve to now, we still know that we don't measure up to God. And it's like trying to hide in the shadows. You know, you know somebody, <laughs> you, if somebody is right there in front of you, but you know, you've done something you're kind of embarrassed about, so you try to hide behind a rock. You know, you, try, you see how I just did that? 
<laughs> and you don't want them to see you, but you know what you've done, and you still live with it. You still have it, but you don't want that person to see you. That that's how the consequences that when we do things that we know that God is not pleased with. Now we we hold all this stuff in. That's why it tells us to carry our burdens to the cross. I know I'm really going a, a Cast lot of all of our cares yeah, on Him. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going a lot of places, mm-hmm. but I want to get get you to understand that um, the consequences of sin that is that I think what we wrestle with a lot that we feel like we're not worthy because we did a thing. That's why he asks, he, he instructs us to repent. It's never been a requirement to not to. It's never been anywhere said, well, you don't have to repent anymore. Um, you don't have to. <laughs> you, it's, it's not written anywhere. You still mm-hmm. have to repent even t- to this day, today. Yeah, there's provision for all of it. He has. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He came to take his sin, our sin, onto himself. And the word says he became propitiation or payment, right, for sin. And so then he forgave us past, right, mm-hmm. uh, before we ever came to be. Before I was formed in my mother's womb, he died for me, mm-hmm. right? Present, right now. As I am saying, Lord, I am a sinner. I need you. I confess you and future. Mm -hmm. But he makes provision for the future. Mm -hmm. When you when you have come to me, I will remember your sins no more. He says that and Mm -hmm. I will cast them into the sea. Mm -hmm. Right. To be remembered no more. But when we after salvation, when we sin, he makes provision for that. And I believe you started with that Romans. Um, no, first John. Did you do first John? Yeah, no, first John, John one, eight, and one, nine. eight, and nine. Yes. Right. If we confess them, mm-hmm. then he is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But we have to confess them. We can't walk around acting like, well, I, I'm saved. So, you know, I'm a Christian. God, God know my heart. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Which is why he gave you a way of escape. For when you mess up, come on, talk to me about it. Mm-hmm. Turn around, go in the other direction, and you know, keep it moving. We don't get a pass to sin Mm-mm. because we have, you know, confessed Christ as our Savior. It's not a free ticket. You no, know? it's not. The the when you once you accept the Holy Spirit, you know. Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit comes into your life. Mm-hmm. He actually gives you uh, information, gives you knowledge. And now you know uh, already what we should do and we shouldn't do. So we shouldn't have, so we know when we do sin, when we do those things, that's why we feel so bad. That's why we feel so, wow, man, I feel so, I feel a, a type of way. Because we know that the thing we're doing is not something that we're supposed to be doing. That's why you know when you look at that woman and you lust in your eye for her. Or when you're at a job and you might take something you're not supposed to take Mm -hmm. and you feel, I mean, it's like, wow, other people do it and it seems like they're all right with it, you know, but when I do it, I I, I feel so weighty. And (laughs) And if you don't, that's a problem. Well, yeah, that's true. Because there are sometimes and, and, and the kingdom, Christendom as a whole gets a bad rap because there are people who confess Christ all day long. Mm hmm. And they excuse away their bad behavior or they hide their bad behavior. Mm-hmm. And then when it's exposed, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, they sometimes people feel entitled to do mm-hmm. certain things. And sometimes people empower them to feel that way because they set them as the mark. Mm-hmm. But we are not to compare ourselves to anybody other than Christ Jesus. That's right. No one. I I can't compare myself to him. Mm-mm. I can't compare. I can't even compare myself to the me I used to be. I am a new creature and I'm supposed to compare myself to Christ and Christ only. And we cannot, we are not exempt from sin. No, we're not. We're not. And sometimes we... From the consequences The of consequences. Sin. Sorry. And sometimes we can embark upon a, um, a sin or error and we might not even have the full um, revelation what was wrong with it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a it's a great story in in chap in Acts chapter um, eight. Is it chapter mm-hmm. four and it's verse eight? Acts chapter it's eight, eight. Mm-hmm. and it talks about um, it's a sorcerer. His name was Simon, mm-hmm. 
and he was amongst the people where Philip was one of the disciples um, that actually spoke to the people and the people were, were so amazed with to speak about Jesus Christ and the good gospel and the news and it was like well what must we do to be saved I want this Jesus I want this Jesus in my life and Philip baptized he um, you know gave him the speech and he told him to say accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior repent and be baptized he baptized him in the name of Jesus Christ Simon was right there okay he was a sorcerer let's get this right but then he said I want Jesus I want mm -hmm. Jesus and he <laughs> believed the Bible says he believed mm -hmm. he believed and he was along with the others that were converted that day and accepted mm -hmm. salvation now with that new belief um, Simon wanted to follow Philip and he saw Philip laying on hands on people and just healing people and just you know um the power bringing of the, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, bringing the sight to the <laughs> blind and healing the lame to walk. Mm -hmm. And Simon said, because he still had that same mentality kind of sort of in the, in the world where he can make money from performing acts. And he said, Philip, I want that. How much does it cost to get that gift right there? <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. Philip was like, your money would die with you. Your money is no good. This is a gift. You cannot pay for this. Mm -hmm. And he's at that moment, um, Simon, Simon was, I want to get to the verse. This is mm -hmm. William's chapter 8. Mm -hmm. And uh, Peter, he says, uh, chapter 8, verse 20. But Peter told him, may your silver be destroyed with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. There's an exclamation point there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have no part or shame in this matter. Share. You share in this matter mm -hmm. because your heart is not right before God. Therefore... I love that word. Repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, mm -hmm. your heart's intent may be forgiven. Or Ooh, I, I like see that. you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by wickedness. Mm. Wait a minute. Wait. He just, he just, he just confessed. <laughs> he just confessed Christ. And then he was like, woo, how can I make some money off of him? Mm -hmm. And that is not a new idea. Mm -mm. It's not a new thing. Mm -mm. And unfortunately, it speaks to what I said before. Sometimes those of us who are in the kingdom, you know, who 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 believe manipulate the things of God mm -hmm. in order to manipulate the people of God. And what did he say? Go back to that scripture for a moment, babe. And he says, um, you have no part or share in this matter because your heart is not right before God. Uh, 22, therefore, repent of this wickedness of yours and pray, if possible, mm -hmm. to the Lord, if possible, your heart's intent may be forgiven. There mm. it is right there. <laughs> your heart's intent mm -hmm. may be forgiven. Because it's not always what we say, how we say it, what we do, how we do it. It's mm -hmm. what is, we look at the outside. Mm -hmm. God knows the inside. Mm -hmm. So when we say, when people say to me, God knows my heart, it means something else to me. Because mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, yep, he sure does. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the heart intent. <laughs> we talked about earlier, my wife uh, said that, you know, we have the sin and then we have something called iniquity. Mm -hmm. You know, the sin, you might have, is, is the plain version of it, uh, like to error, to make a mistake. Um but iniquity is when you plan on doing the wrong. You know it's wrong, and we plan on it. And in this verse in 22, in, in Acts chapter 8, verse 22, um, talks about your heart's intent. And that's the that's really the difference, is that what is your intent? What 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 are you are really are you really searching to serve God? You know, but you know, you didn't Are you just there for the benefit? Yeah. What, what what's your what's your intent? So mm -hmm. That's the question I believe could be on the table. So when a, when a Christian sins, we have the right to repent, you know, ask God for forgiveness. Um, but when you have iniquity, you have to actually go back to the God and say, look, I confess my sins and I really, God, I want you to come into my heart and change it from the inside out. Mm -hmm. and, and from that, I no longer wish to desire these things show me how to not desire you know these things that i know i shouldn't have show me how not to desire to make money off the gospel show me how not to desire the the woman ill yeah gain and money the, off ill gain. from the gospel because Ill they're man. you know it i get what you're saying but mm. sometimes people look at look at uh you know people who are are christians or pastors evangelists etc cetera, etc cetera, and they think 
oh well if it's God then you shouldn't make money from it no no yeah well there's one thing making your living as a pastor if that is your office and that's what you do that's one thing but to deceive people Mm -hmm. in order to gain money to to draw on people for your own personal gain we're not talking about you know a person who's a full-time pastor or people who are paid in ministry and that kind of thing it it's different it's different and what the enemy wants to do is cause us to all of us to err to error and those who are um in the kingdom to to make mistakes or to not not fully repent you know, mm-hmm. well, I won't even say fully repent to not repent, you do or you don't to do not, it. to not repent. Right. <laughs> you do it or you don't. Um, and then to make excuses and say, well, I don't have to do such and such because now I'm, I'm a Christian and those outside to say, well, I don't want to do that because if they can't get it right, then what am I going to do? <laughs> right. So we all need him mm-hmm. and there's provision for those who are outside of the kingdom to come in and be saved by confession and belief and then there is hope for those who who do come in and find themselves in error mm-hmm. to repent and confess and then be forgiven so what happens when a christian sins what should happen is uh first john eight and nine yeah. first john one and nine one and nine yeah and we what can, does that say again? That we confess our sins. God is faithful and just enough to forgive our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Right. That That is what should happen. If, you, <laughs> if I sin, what I need to do is confess it. Mm-hmm. God will forgive me. He will cleanse me. If I'm repenting, I'm going to get up and go in the opposite direction. Not from him, but from the sin. Mm-hmm. That is what should happen Yeah. when yeah. a Christian Sins. And, and you you should not desire to intentionally plan to go against God. And if you do, you continually ask, for, see God's face for it in that matter right there. Because whatever it is, he says, he says, that word is not by accident. He said it in the Hebrew, then he said, no, he said in Arabic, Aramaic. He said it in Greek when they translated it into Romans. I'm in mean, John. He said it in Greek. He says, he is faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And so, if you're at a point right now, you're like, well, y- 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 y'all just don't know. I hear what you're saying, Vincent. I hear what you're saying, Val. Um, but y- 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 y'all just don't know. Look, I know you're struggling with some things. Maybe. But I know my God. I know my God is powerful. I know he's all powerful. He's He is the type of person that can heal a person that 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 was happy being mean was happy um was okay with just this is the best i can do Content, I can't, being miserable yeah i, yeah. I can't do anymore mm-hmm. I, there's nothing else i could do god this is who i am this is who you made me to be mm-hmm. and uh so I, mm-hmm. I i know i yell at my wife i know my kids are not and happy with me but this is it this this is who i am mm-hmm. no when i ask god to change me because I, my mom was convinced I thought that's who I was when I asked him to change he came to my heart and he changed he took this heart of stone and made a heart of flesh so I know there's mm-hmm. some things that you know you might not feel like you can be forgiven for but he's already forgave you if, you, if, you, if you're a child of his now if you're not a child of his and if you're struggling yeah. too because I want to make this clear and thank you so much for sharing that you know, it's part of your testimony, how you thought and what you felt and how God changed your heart. Sometimes people deal with struggles, strongholds, addictions, different things that even if in in their, their heart they want to change, mm-hmm. there are habits and addictions and, and, and strongholds that make it a struggle for them. So we don't want to give you the idea that if you don't get it right the first time you know and then you come back and it's the same thing and you don't get it right God will give you grace Mm -hmm. he will give you grace but misusing that grace or 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 using that grace as an excuse 
to continue doing something that you, if you love God and you have confessed, you should not want to consent, c- continue to sin, but using it as an excuse to continue to sin. That is what becomes the issue. But we're not saying that people, that everybody just automatically no. gets it no, together. I, no, I was, I was safe for a long time. Yeah. For a long time. And I was in my mind made up that this is who I am. And I just don't think there's nothing else I can do. I was right to a point. <laughs> yeah, your understanding was darkened. And in, and in other ways, my understanding was darkened as well. It's like, okay, well, I'm doing the best I know how. Well, you need to know more. Mm-hmm. Because it's the truth that you know that's going to make you free. All of that truth that's in that word is for us to make us free. And so when we say, I can't do this, or I can't do that, or I can't change, we limit God. Mm-hmm. I can do all things through Christ oh. who strengthens me. Mm. But if I don't allow him access to me, mm-hmm. guess what? He's not going to say, get over here and let me <laughs> save you. He's never going to do that. Right? He's yeah. not going to get that crack pipe out of your hand. Mm-hmm. He's not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Stop cheating on your wife. Stop smoking. Now, there are instances like a, some people have a Damascus experience. I know of a pastor who did. He said, I saw the hand of God that told me if I don't stop my mess, he was going to kill me. Now, that was his confession. Yeah. It's, he was a serial cheater. <laughs> and God was tired of his serial, mess. A serial cheater. That's yes. what he said. Yeah. <laughs> it's a verse in Hebrew that talks about how we, um, I know we have to go, but he talks about how how we get like we already know God and God has put his nature inside of us Mm -hmm. and so that's why we we are so agitated sometimes when we we do something bad sometimes we're so ashamed because we know we've done it bad we knew it was bad and we did it anyway so now I know God doesn't like that where did you learn that from I don't know what this verse talks about. It's already inside. If you put his laws inside of us, wow, I'm, I'm hoping I can find it before. Um, um, right. So here we go. Yeah. And this is in Hebrews chapter eight. And it says, uh, starting at verse uh, uh, seven, he said, for if that first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion for a second one. Mm-hmm. But finding fault within his people, he says, this is God, find fault with the people. He says, see, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, mm-hmm. not like a covenant that I made with their ancestors on the day I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. Mm-hmm. I show no concern for them, says the Lord, because they did not continue in my covenant. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. Here we go. I will put my laws into their minds Mm -hmm. and I will write them on their hearts. Mm -hmm. I will be their God and they will be my people. And each person will not, and each person will not teach his fellow citizen and each, and each his brother or sister saying, know the Lord because they will all know me Mm -hmm. from the least to the greatest of them. Mm-hmm. And this is ooh, when I read this verse, this, this sunk in my heart. For I will forgive their wrongdoings, and I will never again remember their sins. This is a prophecy that was told, that was fulfilled in the New Testament, and that's is why that's why we struggle sometimes with wow, why does it agitate us so much? I I did it. I have, I might even have pleasure. In time, but in now, moment, I'm, yeah. but I'm sitting here now, and I'm just like wrestling with. It. I'm going through depression, you know. I'm angry with my wife. She don't know why I'm angry with life, and why? Because you know, you already have an inner knowing. It's the weight, <laughs> the wages mm-hmm. showing up, mm-hmm. and then you know we feel guilty when we get in the presence of others that they may see or sense or discern. Mm-hmm that we are not doing what we should Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. have done and that that is something it's beautiful that he says I will no longer 
have I won't have you to to have to teach your neighbor mm-hmm. what it is. <laughs> but I'm gonna put it what's what's good, what's mm-hmm. right, because you'll know. He's you'll not know. saying don't teach your neighbor my word because oh, yeah. he said go ye into the hedges and the highways, mm-hmm. right, and compel men to come to Christ. But this is the scripture that radiates when people say, well, you know, um, they. Well, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Yes, you did. You, you, you I didn't do. know. I didn't know. Um, I don't know about this Jesus. I don't believe. Mm, yeah. He revealed himself to you. Is there really not an argument to be had? No. Is there really to have an argument about? Is there? You know? Do you know Jesus and not know Jesus? That's we already. You just don't choose to believe him or you don't believe him. That's that's what we're. It's a choice. Discussing right now, yeah. but. Wow. Listen, we can Yeah, we so, I'm sorry, I just opened a whole nother can of worms. <laughs> but if you if you if you're wondering and said, look, look, I, I, what is this Jesus? Who is this Lord that y'all keep referring to? If you don't know him in this way, I urge you to uh, ask him to be the Lord of your life. Because it says in John three sixteen, it said, For God so loved the world in this way, that he did not send his son to this world to condemn the world. But through his son, he might have everlasting life. We will have everlasting life. Mm-hmm. And also in Romans um, 10, 9 and 10, it says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, he said, you will be saved. Or That's as you so just, simple. Yeah. As you say that <laughs> prayer, I said, Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, oh. I accept you as my Lord mm-hmm. and Savior. Please forgive me of my sins. Lord, I'm so sorry. I desire to come back to you. I desire not to be separated from you anymore. Mm-hmm. Lord, please take my life <laughs> and use it for your will. Mm-hmm. We lo- I love you and I adore you. And I believe that God rose you up from the dead. Now you sit on his right hand. And I believe that you died for my sin. Please be my Lord. Man, if you said that prayer, welcome to the family. <laughs> so happy to have you. Please leave a comment if you did. Let us know. Man, that would just, wow, make my day to um, to know that somebody's been added to the family. And I just thank you so much. We pray covering over you that you get a um, somebody that can pour into your uh, life, somebody that can give you good word. That you will find a um, good place to learn and grow and to cultivate and also to not only once you're built up that you are able to build others up in the like manner amen amen, amen. we thank you for being with us tonight and may the lord bless you may he keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious to you and give you peace until next time we'll see you on couples bible study edition bye, bye.